Hi, I'm Emily from LifeSoSavory.com, a sewing community where I share my latest projects and tutorials. Today I'm going to be sharing with you one of the very first patterns that I ever created and it's also my most popular. I think one of the reasons that it's the most popular is because it's very versatile. It comes in sizes 18 months through 10 years and you can create all kinds of fun shirts or dresses for boys and girls using this pattern. So let's just take a look at some of the things that I've done with it. So this is um, a size seven and I've just added a simple Henley neckline to the shirt just to dress it up a little bit. And then this one, I made it into a dress by lengthening and then adding some extra fabric and gathering here between the shoulders. And then this one is the basic shirt design with some iron-on vinyl added for just a fun um, design that my son loves to wear. So I'm going to show you today some of the basics of putting it together and then also I'm going to focus on the neckline because people who make this shirt, the most common feedback is that they had trouble with the neckline. So let's just focus on that today and talk about some different options for making the neckline, top stitching the neckline and getting a professional finish. So traditionally your neckline of your shirt is in a circle and it's often sewn in a circle where the neck band is sewn on like this or in the round. But if you look at any ready to, to wear clothing that you've purchased in the store, you will see that the seam on the shoulder and your neckline was probably not sewn in a circle. So I started several years ago sewing my necklines on an open neck like this and found myself to be much more accurate and much faster doing it this way. So this is the way I recommend if you've never sewn a neckline and we'll talk about how to sew that on in just a minute. So before you sew the neckline, this pattern is very simple with straight lines only. And what you do is you'll sew the sleeves on either side to the front of the shirt and then you'll sew the back to one side of one of the sleeves. Now this sleeve is the same on both the front and the back, so it doesn't really matter which side your sleeves are on. And before you sew this final back and sleeve, I like to sew the neckline. So right now we're gonna go over to the serger and I'm gonna sew this neckline on, talk about some things with that, and then I'll show you a couple of ways that you can top stitch this neckline for a great finish. Now, when you are getting ready to sew a neckline on, you're gonna have three layers of fabric. You're gonna have two layers of your knit binding, and I just like to use knit jersey. This isn't specifically binding fabric, but you can buy ribbed knit, which makes a nice binding as well. And you'll cut it as double, double wide of what you actually want the finish to be. And then you fold it in half with the wrong side inwards, and we just line it up raw edges together on your ne neck edge. So you'll actually have three layers of fabric. You can see that we're gonna sew two layers of the neck binding and one layer of the shirt. And the neck binding is straight. I just cut it straight on the fabric and um, the neckline itself is a little bit curved. So you have to make sure that you're lining up those edges as you go. Also, the binding is smaller than the neckline, so you'll wanna make sure that you stretch that binding to meet the size of the neckline as you sew. So I've pinned mine, stretched and pinned it all along to make it easy for me to sew. And as we're doing this, we're just gonna make sure that we're lining up those three layers of fabric. And so you go nice and slow along there and keep those edges lined up. I don't like to trim a lot of fabric as I'm sewing. So I'm just barely taking off the edge, which just makes a nice clean cut on there, but not really trimming off much. And then of course I'm stopping to pull out the pins and going around the curves, making sure I'm catching all three of those layers. So nice and slow, line up your edges. It'll be, you'll, if you miss, miss the fabric, you will definitely see a hole when we're done sewing this. So it's easiest if we just get it all the first time rather than have to go back and fix our mistakes. And of course I'm speaking from experience on that as many times I've taken it off and I did miss something. 
So I try to go slow and steady around there. All right, so now we have reached the end of the neckline. And this is the place where you just wanna do a quick check to make sure you caught your fabric all the way around there. And then you have a nice neckline. Okay, so now we have two different necklines. One that I've already closed this shoulder. You can see this was added after I put on the neckline. And then this one that's still open. So at this point, you can either top stitch with the neckline open or you can top stitch with it in the circle. It's up to you. I'll start with this one. We're gonna top stitch on there. And one of my favorite methods for top stitching on knit fabric to get a professional look without any professional machines or equipment is to use a twin needle. And that's what I have on my machine right here. So it's actually two needles coming down, going through the fabric and it puts two parallel stitches right along your neckline. It's also a very stretchy stitch because you need this to go over heads and maintain that stretch. So if you do just a regular straight stitch around there, it's very easy to pop those threads when this is pulled over your head. Um, so I've got the twin needle. I also have stretch thread on both the top needles and threaded on the bobbin. So stretch thread is also key when using, um, this is the stretch thread. Okay, so you can buy a variety of different kinds. Um, this is the kind we're using today and it's actually has some stretch in the thread. Also, if your machine has a double needle um, button, you'll wanna push that and it just helps the double needle sew just a little bit more smoothly. But I've also used a twin needle on a machine that didn't have that button and I was able to make it work. So just play around with it, but it's a really simple tool, very inexpensive that gives a really nice look. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna top stitch this serger tail down and then I'm gonna stitch around the neckline. Okay, so that will be our top stitching and then we'll just continue around, around the neckline. So sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get started because we have a lot of bulk here. So I just keep going and then you're gonna stop and turn. And you'll have to pull those needles up because they don't rotate or pivot like a single needle does. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top stitch right along the edge of the neckline, but I'm stitching on the main fabric. So I'm not stitching on the neckline, I'm stitching on the actual shirt. The seam allowance for the neckband is folded down towards the shirt so that it is being stitched now as I'm sewing along. I like to lengthen the stitch to about a three. Your average, your normal stitch is about a 2.5. So I like to make the sti stitch length just a little bit longer when I'm sewing this. I think it gives it a little bit more stretch and also just adds a nice look. But you can play around with the stitch length and um, see what looks best for you. So we're almost back around the beginning of this and I'll show you what I've done before I show you my second option for top stitching if you don't wanna use the twin needle. So you can see right here how this is a really nice looking neckline with even stitches and the best part is it's still really stretchy. So that's gonna fit right over my son's head without any issue and the inside looks pretty too. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a single needle so I can show you the other alternative for top stitching the neckline. All right, now we just have a regular stretch needle on our machine. I've taken off the second spool of thread and we're just dealing with one spool of thread, still stretch thread, um, but only a single needle. I've also changed it to a narrow zigzag and I'm gonna use that to top stitch along the shirt because that will still give us a stretchy neckline without too much fuss. So we're just gonna sew this and I've also left this neckline open. So if it's too intimidating for you or hard when you're starting off to sew that neckline in the circle, sewing it while it's still open is a great way to start with that. And you can always progress up to sewing it in around. 
And you can play around with what sort of zigzags you want to show or what you think looks good. Um, I'm just kind of using the regular zigzag stretch because it'll give us a nice um, tension on our neck, but you can make it narrow, you can make it wider, you can also adjust how um, long this, the stitches as well, and just play around with that. The most important thing you want to make sure that you do is use a stretch that's going to, a stitch that's going to give you some stretch along that neckline so that you don't have those threads popping. And I know when I first started sewing, when my kids were tiny, I had a lot of necklines that did pop open on those threads. And back stitching isn't as important on this because you are going to be closing the neckline when you sew the shoulders. So here's just a simple zigzag top stitch on the neckline. Still gives you a nice stretch stitch and a beautiful inside with minimal effort. So there's the kids raglan pattern. Very easy to sew, but I've just walked you through the trickiest parts, hopefully giving you some tips and tricks that you can use to achieve a very nice looking neckline on a very easy shirt.